right, let's say we want to create an isometric view of this part. So I'll give you some quick tips on how to do that. If this part is in the correct orientation, it'll work out fine. If you have this, because you were working on something like looking at the bottom datum or something, you leave in that orientation and you come over here to your drawing and you go into the view layout and you try and make your ISO view. Go to your tab where your part is and you click on that face. If I click a location, that's what my ISO view is going to look like. It's going to be in some cattywampus orientation you don't want. So I'm going to undo that. Oh no, don't crash on me. Let's do an update here. I had the little symbols on there telling me to update. Okay, so let's say we want to do this ISO view. When you go into your space view, you should first create your engineering ISO view. Under the views tab, there's an arrow on the far right of the features. On the bottom right, hit that arrow and find your camera. Well, what you want to do here is be in the ISO view, so make sure you pick your ISO view feature. Pick your fit all in feature. That's your engineering ISO view. You come over here and you click on it, and it's as if you took a picture of it in that position. I will highlight this and go into engineering ISO view and hit enter. That view is now named the engineering ISO view. I'll close this off. If you ever have it all cattywampus or zoomed way off and it's somewhere off in no man's land, I can't even find it. All you have to do is hit your camera, hit your engineering ISO view, and it'll put it right back to where it was in the engineering ISO view. Immediate close, immediately close it off because it'll allow you to modify your view um, if you don't close that off. So if you start moving it, it's going to change your engineering ISO view on the fly. And I don't want to do that, so I immediately close that window off. Now when I come over here, I can go into my ISO view, pick on the tab that represents the part, pick on any face, and it creates that engineering ISO view in the same view as I had it on the model. Okay, so whatever orientation is in the model, that's what it's going to take a snapshot of. Click on it anywhere and it'll create the isometric view. Remember, uh, I see it wants me to update again, so we're going to right click and hit update. Remember in your isometric view to change your properties. Under the generation, we don't want any fillets, axes, hidden lines, center lines, any pattern. We don't want nothing on in there. Select OK. Um, it comes in with the text. I'm going to just kind of slide that text out of the way for right now. And I'm going to quickly highlight every. Oops. I'm going to highlight everything. Whoops, I missed. I'm going to highlight all of that and change that line font all at once. So I go to properties. Right click on the line to get the contextual menu to go to properties. You look for the tab called graphic on the top. And we're going to change the line weight thickness to 5. So I've made a new line weight thickness of 5. Select OK, and that boldens up that part so it's easy for me to see the periphery of the part. Now, I'm going to do some dimensioning on an ISO view. So if I want to dimension an ISO view, look for Annotation tab, and we'll do the dimension on the ISO view. So I'll click on that. Let's try a couple ways here. I'm going to click this line and drag it out. Oh, I should have double clicked this to keep it on. 
click this line click this line here and drag it out click this line here and then I always line up the arrows wherever possible that's probably what I would do right there another technique let's uh, undo those another technique would be to go to dimensions and select two lines And then you could have your dimension look like that, where the extension lines go in the same direction as the line you picked. Again, I could pick dimensions and go with two lines. And dimensions and go with two lines here. All right, and that's another way I could do that. Let's say I wanted to dimension and have this go out in this direction. I don't have that line here to pick from. What you could do is go to your ISO view and go to properties and turn on your hidden lines temporarily. With those hidden lines on, you can go back to dimension and dimension to the line that's hidden dimension to this line that I can see and I could have my dimension come off this direction so if you ever need to dimension to a line that's hidden just turn on the hidden line and then when you're done go back to your ISO view properties and turn the hidden line back off okay I don't want this dimension, so I'm going to delete it. I will highlight all these dimensions and right click on them and change the properties. We'll change the value from feet and inches to number decimal. Hit OK. And that's how you dimension isometric view. Now, we normally would not dimension to isometric view because all the lines in the isometric view are foreshortened. They're not true size and shape, so if they were to measure in the shop 5 inches, this line here is not going to be 5 inches, nor will it be 3 inches tall. That line has been foreshortened in this view. So, if we want to leave the dimensions in there, we would have to change these to a reference callout. There's a few things you can do. If I click on this dimension, I can click on that red triangle and in the insert text box that shows up down here in the bottom right, I'll move it up here closer so you can see it. I'll use the open parenthesis and hit OK. Select on this red triangle and hit close parenthesis and say OK. Click off of it. Parentheses means we're doing a reference dimension. That tells the shop that this is a reference only and it's not to be measured to. Or I could click on this and go to properties. I'm going to look for text. Dimension text. The parentheses around it are text in this field. I could put in a parenthesis and another parenthesis. I'll hit OK and it does the same thing it puts parentheses around the numbers the other option would be to click on this hit that red text or go to right click properties either way and in this field I could type in reference and hit OK and that tells the shop their reference constraints the only reason I put that on there is to help a part planner take a look at the part and know my overall length width and height of the part if the guy that's part planning this has to make a decision on how it's going to be made and who's going to be making it, he'll have a good idea of what the raw stock material would be. So if this were going to be a machine part and we we're going to machine it in-house, we would have to make sure that we have the raw stock material available before the shop got it to start making it. So 
these dimensions I will have you create on the drawings because I want you to practice learning how to create reference callouts on an isometric view. One, to be a nice guy to help the part planner out. Two, when I was in production, sometimes we wouldn't be doing drawings, we would be making views and we would throw dimensions out there for the shop like you're doing a research development. We're just trying to get some dimensions out there. Uh, just some real quick rough dimensions, letting them know to go try and make a part of that size. So that can be used for RMD a lot of times where the measurements is kind of ugly looking. You can make a nice pretty print for the shop to work with for some kind of experiment for non-drawing type thing. Last thing we have to do is we have to label this view. This thing should be below this text here. So we can edit that by double clicking it. And don't forget at the home page, the beginning, hit the dash and then whatever part number it's going to be. And everything has to be in caps. Oh, that's weird. I'm going to go to the end of this and type in view. Shift enter to get to the next line and type in engineering reference only. Again, this is a foreshortened view. We don't want anybody measuring anything and measuring something and saying, well, we got a measurement here. We have documented that this whole view was an isometric view and it's for reference only. Shift enter. We'll type in scale none. I'm going to highlight the top of this here. What is going on? This should be dash, let's just say it's dash one. Okay, I'm going to highlight this whole top profile. For some reason it's not letting me highlight that. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to right click in this field over here and go to properties. And I'm going to select graphic. No, I meant to select text. I'm going to select the text. And I'm going to change the height. Sorry. We have to select font. Eventually, though, you'll get it. Pick, keep picking the tabs, you'll find what you want. I'm looking for the tab called font. I'm going to grab this one here and select apply. You'll see that the font gets to be twice as big as the rest of the text because the dash one isometric view is the title of this view. And then this is notes about this view. It's an engineering reference only and it's scale none. Okay, I will turn the view frame off to make it look pretty. Click off here in no man's land. And that is what an isometric view should look like.